Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Calabrese, and welcome to this edition of Insights into Computer Science. This week, we will be discussing how to transform computer memory into amazing creations. If you recall, computer memory is made up of special electronic devices called transistors. These transistors take electronic signals of different voltages and use them to create ones and zeros. We all know that these ones and zeros are not real. I mean, if I cut the LAN cable connecting your computer to the university network, I will not see all kinds of ones and zeros pouring out all over the place. The ones are symbolic representations of a positive voltage, and the zeros represent the absence of that voltage. This is known as an abstraction. Abstraction means to hide detail. And in this case, that is exactly what we're doing. What I mean is, it's a lot easier to think of ones and zeros than it is to think about all that electronic hardware mess. In essence, what we have just created are the abstraction known as bits. You already are aware that four bits form the abstraction called the nibble. These four bits can hold 16 different patterns ranging from 0000, 0, 0, 0 to 1111. Eight bits form a byte. A byte can hold two to the eighth number of possible combinations, ranging from 0000000000 to 11111111. We think in bytes all the time in computer science. In fact, all of computer memory is arranged as a series of linear bytes starting at location zero and going all the way up to the size of the memory you purchased when you bought your computer. We call this volatile memory or RAM, random access memory. Most modern computers have an onboard memory of at least four gigabytes. That is four billion bytes of memory. Some might even say that this is a small number given that memory is dirt cheap today. A good number for RAM on your laptop would be 8 or 16 gigabytes, with a top end of a whopping 64 gigabytes. That, my friends, is a lot of memory. Now, as I was saying, if you examine that memory as it is laid out in your computer, you will see that it is in fact linear starting at zero and progressing one byte at a time. Each byte gets a memory address. The first byte is address zero. That's right, zero. We are computer science people and we always start counting it zero. It's what makes us special. We can do a lot with that sequential memory just as it is. For example, let's say that we want to create a game tic-tac-toe on your computer. Really, all we need are nine variables, one for each square on the board. In terms of computer memory, that is one byte of memory to hold either an X or an O, or just the available square for someone to choose. If I were coding the game in a linear fashion in the C programming language, I would start by creating the game board by reserving nine contiguous bytes in an array. An array is our next abstraction. Essentially, an array is a request to the operating system to provide the program with nine linear and contiguous, meaning together, bytes. Let's say that we make that request by using the command char, C-H-A-R, T-T-T, square bracket, nine, square bracket, and of course, in the C programming language, we end every command with a semicolon. That command means provide nine character type variables and name the starting address TTT. So the upper left box on the board is TTT sub zero. The upper middle is TTT sub one. The upper right is TTT sub two. And the middle square is TTT sub four. All the way up to the lower right, TTT sub eight. Now remember, there is no TTT sub 9 because we started at TTT sub 0. So let's play. I'll go first as X and you'll be O. Hmm. I think I want the middle square, so I'll pick TTT sub 4. 
Let's just say you choose the upper right, so you choose TTT sub 2. Well, then I will take the upper left, TTT sub 0. Now you need to block, so you pick TTT sub 8. Following along, what should X do next? Well, I'm going to block, so I need to choose TTT sub 5. Boy, this is really confusing. What makes this so confusing is that we are playing at a level too close to the natural operating level of the computer. We are people, and we tend to think at a higher, more abstract level. There's that word again, abstraction. We need to make this more comfortable for the user. I've got it. Let's use Cartesian coordinates to mark our boxes. So, we will use a row and column system to number the nine boxes. The upper left will be TTT 0, 0. This means the first row, first column. Remember the whole zero thing? Next is upper middle, TTT 0, 1, meaning first row, second column. The middle of the board is TTT 1, 1, and so on. In the C programming language, we accomplish this by saying char TTT square bracket three square bracket square bracket three square bracket and of course we end with a semicolon. Again, this means assign three by three character types, which again is one byte in length. So assign nine characters or nine bytes and call them starting at TTT. This is where the abstraction comes in. You see, the computer is still storing those nine bytes sequentially and linearly, but the system is allowing us to reference them as a row by column combination. That's really cool and useful. In essence, we are creating a two-dimensional playing board in a one-dimensional space. Now let's say you program this game and play for a while. Everyone is impressed, but before long, no one wants to play because it's too easy. Every game ends in a tie. What is a designer to do? Think of a new thing. Hmm, I've got it. A 3D tic-tac-toe game. That would be really hard. Now, this game is much harder. I mean, there are so many ways to win, it is impossible to defend. So, let's add a couple of new rules if then else statements like if you win on three different planes of the cube then the game is over else next turn now that we have uh, that out of the way and we know the visual of what we want to create we must once again use the power of abstraction to make this come to life well this seems relatively straightforward in c we need a set of coordinates that allow us to use a game space in three dimension, rows, columns, and planes, or X, Y, and Z coordinates. We can do this with the C command, char TTT 3, 3, 3, as three different sub-indices followed by a semicolon. Translated as a set of 3 by 3 by 3 or 27 character types or bytes laid out sequentially starting at the location referred to as TTT. Again, we are expressing a 3D concept or board in a one dimensional space. This is such great fun. I can't stop now. Let's take this one step further. This concept can go beyond our practical view of the world. Let's say that you're playing the 3D game and Mr. Spock comes along and wants something even more challenging. Now that would be a tough customer to please. What to do? Hmm. I've got it. Four-dimensional tic-tac-toe. Now that ch sounds challenging, but what is it? Well, it's my memory, so my rules. To be specific, my sequence of if-then-else combinations are what we're talking about. So I am going to say the fourth dimension in this case will be time. You can play three cubes, one in the past, one in the present, and one in the future. Say what? 
Well, the rules will be something like you can choose any variable space in the present cube and try to win on three planes in that space. But after three successive turn, each cube shifts backward in time, meaning the future cube is now the present cube. The present cube becomes the past cube and the old past cube goes away and a new future cube is introduced. Oh, and by the way, as much as the present can be preserved in the past, so be it. Like if I have the center cube in the present, I overwrite whatever was in that space in the past. Now, if I knock you out of that space in the past, then it only seems fair that you should be able to get a chance to claim a new cube space in the future. Wow, that sounds complicated to play, and it would be. But in fact, creating the game memory or the game board, as you would expect, quite trivial. In the case of C, we create a four dimensional array space by simply abstracting. Care TTT -t -t -t, sub 3333, three, three. meaning reference the four dimensions row, column, plane, and time being past, present, or future cube. With a set of 3x3x3x3 three by three by three by three or 81 sequential characters or bytes referenced in the abstracted way. By this, I mean. I will map the four dimension concept onto a one dimension space of 81 bytes. This is amazing, right? So remember at some point in your computer science career, when you've learned some more advanced programming tricks, you will be able to think of a thing and then make the thing. See you next time.